Okay, plant tissues. They are of two types: meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. Now, meristematic tissue, the tireless, fearless, ever-growing, most active tissue found in the regions where the plants actively grow. They are made up of bunches of small, densely packed, thin-walled cells that keep on and on and on dividing to produce new cells, and so they have one a huge nucleus. And two, they lack one major organelle that is found only in plants, the central vacuole. And why do they lack that? The vacuole's main function, as you know, is the storage of water and support. And meristematic cells need neither. This is why vacuoles are very, very small or altogether absent in the meristematic tissue. So the meristematic tissue is responsible for growth, and as you would have guessed, growth can be either vertical or horizontal. So we have different tissues responsible for each of them. Meristematic tissue type number one, the apical meristem, usually present in the tips of the shoots and the roots, and responsible for unilateral growth. What's that? Growth in one direction, and makes the plant shoot up or shoot down as the case may be. They would be found in the stem, that's right over here, as well as in the roots. This vertical growth is also called primary growth. Now, since the root meristem goes into the soil and gets its hands dirty, it's got a protection for itself called the root cap. The apical meristems are undifferentiated. Okay, that's a big word. Or uh, basically, they just have this huge urge to continuously divide, and then as they keep on doing that, some of them become specialized, or they differentiate into something called primary meristems. Now, primary meristems then differentiate into Secondary meristems. Now, differentiate is a word you would hear a lot from now and in higher grades. It's not rocket science, really, but it's important, so you need to get it right. Now, it just means that cells are going to divide and then become specific for a particular function, and they're going to have this new look as well, so that that particular function can actually be carried about. So, in our body, for example, the muscle cells and the nerve cells look completely different, right? Why is that? And when does that happen? You know for a fact that the first half an hour of our life, each one of us start as a single cell. That's as soon as fertilization happens, and then the embryo starts dividing. All these cells at that time would look exactly the same, and as time passes, they start differentiating or getting specialized for the function that they're supposed to do. So muscle cells develop themselves so that movement can happen, and nerve cells develop themselves so that information can be transmitted through signals all over our body. So. In one line, what is differentiation? The process of taking up a permanent shape, size, and a function is differentiation. Okay, now that differentiation is very clear to you, let's get back and understand the two other important types of meristematic tissue. Okay, the lateral meristem. Lateral meristems account for secondary growth in plants. Secondary growth. Any guesses? Yes, it's generally horizontal growth. A good example would be the growth of a tree trunk in girth. The apical meristem was for increasing the length of the stem and the root, and the lateral meristem increases the girth or the width of the plant. So, where would you find it? Yes, right over here. Now, there's one more type of meristem that is found just at the base of the leaves or the internodes of the twigs, right about here, and this is called the intercalary meristem. Now, intercalary meristems, for example, at the nodes of, say, a bamboo plant. Allow for rapid stem elongation, while those at the base of most grass leaf blades allow damaged leaves to rapidly regrow. So the leaf regrowth in grasses evolved in nature as a response to damage by herbivores that would graze on it. But to you, a more familiar response would be the response of plant to lawn mowers, right? So when you run the lawn mower over the plant, it would just regrow again and again. Now just observe how wonderful and dynamic life is. If the herbivores kept eating away and the plants did not generate more leaves by developing the intercalary meristem, then the plants would not be able to survive. Neither would the animals. By differentiating and producing more and more leaves, the plants have ensured survival not only for themselves but also for the animals that eat it. Now, this is the best example of the way in which we adapt to our environment and surroundings and keep. Ourselves alive, and next the permanent tissues. Permanent tissues, as the name goes, are permanent and they do not change their structure. Now, meristematic tissues keep on dividing and form permanent tissue. 
they take up a specific role and lose the ability to divide and voila they become permanent tissues now you remember i told you that meristematic tissue cells have very small or no vacuoles at all now as the cells mature the vacuoles will grow to many different shapes and sizes depending on the needs of the cell and it's also possible that the vacuole may fill 95% or more of the cells total volume in permanent tissues now cells of meristematic tissues differentiate to form different types of permanent tissues and what are those i'll tell you the first one you tell me the second simple permanent tissue and yes complex permanent tissue again simple permanent tissue are of three types parenchyma colon chyma and scleren chyma and before this sounds like greek latin and spanish to you let us dive into them individually and simplify them so that all of this is translated back into something very very easy parenchyma made up of parenchyma cells the most abundant cell type found in all major parts in higher plants when they are first made they're spherical in shape and then they get packed up nicely side by side and because of their thin walls they go on and get flattened at the points of contact the vacuoles are large and can contain some secretions like starch oils and some crystals now there are some hybrid varieties of parenchyma cells depending on where they are found and they have some obvious names too pop a chloroplast into them not only will it give a nice green color to the cell but even more importantly the cell can now carry out the process the wonderful process of photosynthesis what are these cells called chlorin chyma now if the parenchyma cells don't have chloroplasts they won't be green obviously and they won't aid in photosynthesis too but they help in the storage of food and water when parenchyma cells are loosely packed together with some air spaces it's got a nice name aeren chyma it's found in water lilies and provides buoyancy and helps them float in water also it gives the submerged parts of the plant access to a supply of air oh and one more yummy thing about parenchyma they are found in most of the edible portions of fruit so if you look at parenchyma itself there are so many of those right next it's colenchyma colenchyma tissues formed from colenchyma cells they look somewhat similar to parenchyma cells but they have one distinguishing feature their walls are thicker and if you take a cross section the walls are also uneven they are pliable in addition to being strong and this is how they provide flexibility and support to the plant they provide flexible support for organs like leaves and flower parts and again they are very 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 tightly packed and have very less intercellular space and here you need to note one important thing both parenchyma and colenchyma are living cells the last type of simple permanent tissue we're getting a little spooky now is a tissue which is mostly dead at maturity called sclerenchyma and as you must have guessed sclerenchyma cells form sclerenchyma tissue these cells have thick tough secondary walls embedded with a special hardness providing agent if i can call it that lignin lignin which makes the cell super tough and super strong the husk of a coconut okay if you've seen it is a perfect example of sclerenchyma cells the cells are narrow long with lignin enriched thick walls walls are so thick that sometimes there is nothing inside the cell uh, where else is it found all the harder parts of the plant that you can think of veins of the flowers covering of seeds hard covering of seeds and nuts right the next major type of plant tissues that you would come across are called complex tissues and there's actually nothing complex about these tissues they are just a combination of two or more simple tissues two important complex tissues have nice sounding complicated names to add to the complication which gives us absolutely no indication of what they do xylem and phloem but you know what xylem is derived from a greek word xylon which means wood uh, this actually gives us a hint albeit a very 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 small hint of what xylem does it is composed of a thick bundle of pipes running down the main axis of stems and roots when you think xylem think plumbing yes plumbing the plumbing system of the plant these are the set of pipes through which water in the plant flows 
it carries water and other dissolved substances throughout and is a nice combination of four main types of cells parenchyma cells fibers vessels and tracheids the xylem does the actual transportation through tracheids and vessels and together they are called tracheary elements now tracheids and vessels are both long tube like elongated cells in the xylem of vascular plants through which the actual transport of water and mineral salts happen both of them will be dead at maturity and since both of them apparently do the same thing you must be wondering what the difference could be why can't the plant just have one of them the fact is that there are differences between the two one look at this and you can spot the difference yourself one tracheids have a much smaller diameter compared to vessels and they do not have perforations all over vessels are broader they have perforations all over this makes vessels more efficient at transporting water two vessels are much much longer in length and are the main components for water conduction in the plant and vessels are found only in angiosperms what's that flowering plants but tracheids are found in all vascular plants now what's vascular plants i'm going on saying that right nothing but those who have vasculums or ducts or tubes for transportation that would be the xylem and the phloem the fibers and the xylem parenchyma the main function of fibers think fibers think support okay and the parenchyma stores food uh, and helps in the sideway conduction of water whenever necessary the next conduction pathway in plants that we will discuss is the phloem again greek it means bark not the verb bark the noun bark like the bark of a tree and again the function is a wee bit close to the name it sports what does the phloem do you might have guessed this already we transported water now we need to transport food and that is exactly what the phloem does it carries dissolved food particles throughout the plant it is also a part of the plumbing system of the plant that i spoke about and by the way where is the kitchen of the plant it is right there in the leaves and how does the phloem look it's a big mashup of four types of cells sieve elements or the conducting elements companion cells phloem fibers and phloem parenchyma the transport mainly happens through the sieve tubes and the perforations on these tubular walls make the process all the more efficient they have their buddy companion cells and the fibers to give support and why do they need the companion cells because sieve elements at maturity lack a nucleus have very few organelles so they rely on companion cells for all their or most of their metabolic needs now you have sieve elements only in angiosperms and in gymnosperms you have a more primitive type called sieve cells now primitive or not they do the job they are just relatively narrower the phloem parenchyma like the xylem parenchyma are used for food storage and one major difference between xylem and phloem is that unlike the xylem all the elements other than the fibers are alive and kicking and there's one more difference i'm not sure if you realized it the phloem can transport food up and down through the plant but the xylem can transport water only upwards and occasionally sideways there's one more complex tissue not as famous as xylem and phloem but equally important the epidermal cells officially the epidermis is the outermost layer of cells on all plant organs be it roots stems or leaves now the epidermis is in direct contact with the environment and so it beautifully adapts itself to the environment as well let's see how generally the epidermis is one cell layer thick but in some tropical plants the layer may be several cells thick can you think why this can happen the climate will be so hot so the plant would need to avoid loss of water and absorb as much water as possible from the environment so it would act as a sponge now cutin is a fatty substance secreted by most cell epidermal cells forms a waxy protective layer called the cuticle and now you can actually determine how much water is actually lost by evaporation by just measuring the thickness of this layer and at no extra charge the cuticle provides some much needed resistance to bacteria and other disease causing organisms some plants have uh, wax which has commercial value you heard of shoe polishes and candle wax it's wax from a plant called wax palm and epidermal cells have special roles in roots and leaves epidermal cells are important for increasing the surface area and root hairs now why would anyone want to increase the surface area and root hairs it's to increase 
absorption. Yes. And in leaves, the many small pores called stomata that are guarded by specialized epidermal cells called guard cells, unique epidermal cells of a different shape and they contain chloroplasts. What are they needed for? For exchanging gases with the atmosphere. All this happens through the stomata. Okay, and that just about summarizes the tissue world of plants. Let's now get into familiar terrain, the tissues of our body or animal tissues.